Hey guys, Greg here, Bone Tactical, and today we're going to discuss basic pistol fundamentals. Now, don't take it in your mind, oh, basics, I know my basics, I know all this stuff, no. The basic pistol fundamentals, most people don't get right. And even the most advanced firearms trainers or people that are, you know, weapons experts, a lot of times make mistakes on the fundamentals and generally speaking, the mistakes that are made are fundamental errors. So they're errors because the fundamentals are not down pat. Everybody needs to practice the fundamentals, no matter how good you are with a gun. You can be as hot on the gun as you want. The fundamentals are still crucial to practice and to master. The fundamentals are the core of advanced and expert pistol marksmanship. All right, we're gonna go through basic, intermediate, and advanced pistol, three different videos. I'm gonna be doing shooting on a plate carrier that was sent in by LA police gear and body armor that's protective all the way up to AK-47 rifle plates all the way around protection is what we've got in there the plate carrier itself is from LA police gear we're going to see if it holds up and we're going to do some testing on that as well during this course of discussions so first off practicing the fundamentals all right what we've got going on here First off is safety. So your firearm is always treated like it's loaded. Never point your firearm at anything that you don't want to destroy, okay? Those are kind of the basic firearm principles. There are some times when those rules get bent, but for most people, unless you carry a gun for a line of work type thing, you're probably not gonna ever have to bend any of those rules. There are times some guys carry appendix for example like to carry around in the chamber there uh you know they're you know when your gun pretty much anybody has their gun in their holster it's gonna get pointed in directions right but we're talking mostly about when the firearm's in your hand from there a good holster is crucial because your firearm won't go off if it's in a good holster guns don't go off by themselves but a little bit of a piece of clothing or an old worn out leather holster can cause your firearm to go off while you're carrying it right so those are some things to know keeping a firearm in your house it's extremely important that you keep it locked up or in really just locked up not only for kids children stuff like that but also for if a, somebody breaks into your house you need to know that they're not going to be using that gun against you you get home your gun you left your gun somewhere and now that that thief is using your gun against you so we're going to discuss pistol marksmanship and pistol skills from my point of view which is that of a self-defense or weapons type we're not talking about pistols for competition shooting here we're talking about life on the line pistol skills right and so today we've got lone wolf as some sponsors as well lone wolf sponsored this upper and barrel we've got the lone wolf alpha wolf barrel and glock 19 upper and that's kind of uh, the list of sponsors. We're also gonna be testing out from Zahal.org a recoil spring. I have never used this recoil spring, so we're about to find out if there's malfunctions or not. All right, here we go, the basic pistol fundamentals. Since I've got the pistol in my hand in front of me, I'm gonna discuss grip. All right, the first thing about grip is making sure that your hand is all the way up into the groove on the back of the pistol, and you wanna cover as much of the grip as you can. So I use my other hand to fill this void in the grip here. Fill the void, and then I circle my fingers. A Glock's very nice because I can have access to a little spot right there. Some people like to stipple so they can feel what they're doing right there. So they've got that, that little spot there to rest their other thumb. All right, from there you're talking about sight picture. Okay, sight picture, what you wanna look at for sight picture is everything lined up, but you're focusing on the front sight, unless you have some sort of an RMR like this, 
which is something that I have, but absolutely not something necessary. And really, I prefer, this is not my carry pistol, this is a fancy YouTube pistol, right? And I also, if I carry a gun, I don't like to practice all the time with the same gun because I don't want to always be pending into whether springs need to be changed and all that kind of stuff. So I like to train with this. It, it gives me malfunctions, so I get to practice with malfunctions. And you know, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a kind of almost a race gun. It's getting there, but it's fun to practice with. Now I really do. If I didn't have this Trigicon, then I wouldn't be on here. But so I sometimes practice with no sights at all. One of the nice things about Glock is that the ba the the handle being rectangular like this, you can actually get a feel for where the pistol's pointing more. So so you if you get very good, you can you can fire off of feel. Okay, but that's 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 an advanced concept there. What we're talking about now is sight picture. Okay, so you want line your sights up. That's common sense knowledge here, guys. How to line sights up. That's uh, that needs to be studied, but should come your pistol should come with a manual where the particular sights show you how to line it up. From there, you're focusing on the front sight and the target, all right? Lining everything up is peripheral, front sight and target. You do wanna keep learn to keep both eyes open so you can have situational awareness, so shoot with both eyes open whenever possible. There are times if you're gonna be doing, uh, there's a lot of myths out there, okay? All these tactical guys are, are black and white, black and white, black and white. You never close an eye. No, uh, guys, if you're taking a long shot and, and it helps you and you can shoot more accurately with closing an eye and you know that this shot has to count, you know what's around you, close your eye and take the shot. But practice always harder skills and mastering the skills. So practice with your eyes open, right? Um, from there, so we've talked about grip, we talked about sight picture. From there, it's trigger squeeze, okay? Trigger squeeze. You don't jerk the trigger. You want to have the pad of your finger, the center. You got a little bump. Most people have a little bump there. Or you can see there's a swirl. Where there's the swirl in your, in your index finger is where you want to touch the trigger. So let's say that this is the trigger, all right? So I'm touching middle of my finger. If I put my finger too far into the trigger guard, I'm gonna be pulling like this. If I don't put enough of my finger into the on, into the trigger, then I'm gonna be pushing like this and my shots are gonna be going off. If shots are going left, it's probably because I need to put my finger further into the trigger guard. If shots are going right, it's probably because it's too far in there, right? So there's those are some, some basic skills and fundamentals there as far as the trigger goes, but the most important thing is a nice, easy squeeze and reset. Squeeze and reset. Nothing jerky, nothing fast. From there, you wanna practice. A lot of guys like to set something on the front of their pistol, like a little, with a Glock, you can set a penny up there. You can practice your, your trigger squeeze with, with no rounds in the chamber. You can feel the click, and if your gun doesn't go like this and the penny doesn't fall, then you're good to go, all right? That's the, the next thing about trigger squeeze is that a lot of guys get scared of the recoil, and it's a natural thing. We all have done it, so it's good to practice to make sure you're cool, calm, and control. Talking about that, we wanna talk about breathing techniques, all right? You wanna generally shoot either on breathing out or your natural respiratory pause. It gets a lot more advanced with precision rifles to the point where you wanna find your natural respiratory pause and even fire between heartbeats because of any kind of small movement when you're talking out to 1,600, 2,000, 3,000 yards, depending on you know the type of ballistic or type of round that you're using, um, really advanced stuff, but the same principles apply with a pistol. You want to have breath control, all right? That's why in advanced marksmanship with the pistol, we torture ourselves with working out and then we shoot because we need to learn how to actually shoot when, we, when breath control is next to impossible, but it's never possible. You're always breathing. You can always control your breathing, right? So it's something you wanna practice now, controlling your breathing, being aware of everything that's going on in your body, everything around you, Know your pulse, know your heart rate, and it, eventually you can get to the point where if you need to take controlled long shots, you can time that trigger squeeze, knowing your firearm to where the round pops off with a squeeze, not a jerk, at the re natural respiratory pause. And like I said, even between heartbeats, stuff like that is, is definitely doable, right? You can learn to control your pulse rate, slow your pulse rate, control your breathing, all that kind of stuff. So. We're gonna go from there. I'm not gonna really recommend doing mag changes at this point yet because we're talking basic, 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 basic pistol fundamentals. So your basic pistol fundamentals, I'm also not gonna 
recommend going from the draw because you you want to really get the fundamentals down and w trigger discipline is one of those things so my finger is always here on the outside of the trigger guard until i'm ready to shoot okay so i'm drawing but we're like i said we're not drawing in this video so i'm from here which is like a medium or low ready some guys like to be more here some guys like to be more here you know in uh in in athletics fight sports martial arts anything like that knees slightly bent hips over your you know shoulders everything like that here slight bend in your knees shoulders back eyes up all right this is a across the board athletic position here my pistol high can be all the way up here but obviously if i'm really tired i'm going to want to have that little cheat and have it kind of resting on my chest here if i'm if i'm out patrolling for example i'm way out here in the sticks and we do we have training courses out here in the mountains and i'm not going to lie i'm getting old i've got i live a good life these days sometimes i get out here and i've been you know slacking a little bit on my workouts and a, a 15 mile hike up a mountain with my pistol out being aware of where's the targets on my trail it, you know it gets tiring i'm not going to carry my pistol like this the whole time i'm going to want to have it rested here it's got to be ready because i want to be able to be ready but but so shoot from here practice from here if you're training at a range guys just know that the there's going to be people there regulating that your firearms always pointed down range so you may have to hold it like this to practice if you are able to find a more natural resting position that's fine so you go from here and you push out right front sight target everything's lined up grips good practice your trigger squeeze that's what we're talking about here from there what i will recommend is having a plan so you can work on your knowing your round count knowing how many shots you're firing all that kind of stuff so my plan now is just going to be two shots body one shot head right i'm not going to plan for mag changes or anything like that i'm going to be very careful to clear my firearm where it's pointed all the time not put my finger in the trigger guard until i'm ready to shoot so i'm going to be in this natural ready position athletic position push out front sight i'm going to go two shots body one shot head i've got center mass lined up right now with this dummy here with the armored vest on one shot two and now i'm going to go head two shots body one shot head my mag is empty i may still have a round in the chamber because it didn't lock back no there's no round in the chamber no round in the chamber, firearms clear, and we're good to advance to the next shooting sequence, okay? So I will speed that up a little bit uh, on this one. I'm gonna go two shots body, one shot head. If I'm in an extreme combat situation, I may drop my magazine. That's more of a military guy thing a lot of times, but it depends on how strapped you are for time, whether you're behind cover, all that kind of stuff. I do like to save my magazines when I can, so, I can drop this, I can stick this magazine in my pocket or I can just drop it right out of the gun automatically while I'm reaching for my next magazine. But for the, those of us that are civilians, it is nice to sometimes have access, right, to, uh, to those kind of techniques, but we don't have unlimited resources. We can't leave mags behind a lot of times, stuff like that. So, so it's, it's, it's something to think about position of your magazines as well. I like to index mine like this and just flip them up like this. Index finger in the front of the mag. From there, my pistol's pretty much in front of my face. I can enter it in here, drive it hard home, okay? There's a, a button here that releases the slide forward. Now my firearm's ready to go. I would have stayed in this position here because I'm, I'm shooting, so I'm, I can see my firearm and I can see everything that's going on around me. So enter the, the finger enters the trigger guard as i'm on target i'm on target i've got a either a malfunction or there was only two rounds in here i'm gonna look because the the again didn't lock back gonna put this in my back pocket and load one more gonna go two more shots body All right, speed it up a little more. Two shots body, one shot head. Did have a slight malfunction. 
which is cool to show. So in this case, the malfunction is pretty easy to see what's going on here. I've got a, a, a round, and that's that's because this this is a this pistol's relatively uh, Frankenstein build and new stuff that maybe needs to break in. Who knows? But this is easy to clear. All right. A lot of times I can just rack the gun. If I can see that the brass is sticking out, I know I need to clear that brass sticking out so I can literally just go like this. All right. Remove the brass. And if there was another round in the chamber, it would slide forward on its own. I could push out and fire that round. Okay. That's kind of the gist of the basic pistol skills. I'll do one more for you guys showing what we're talking about here, which is the two shots body, one shot head. And that's kind of just a very general, very general approach to a drill. So your, your most basic drill is getting to know your pistol, getting to know your safety rules and regulations. And then from there, two shots body, one shot head, trigger squeeze, grip, everything like that. Check that your gun's empty, good to go. You can remove your magazine, right? Remove your magazine, gun's empty, gun's empty, holster. And let's go take a look at what actually happened with the plate carrier. So we've got a clustering of shots here. One in the family jewels, one here. One here, one here, one here, one here. And uh, one actually broke the buckle, two actually broke the buckle it looks like. So that's an interesting thing to look at. So when you're you know, running a plate carrier, the possibility of receiving around here and breaking the buckle. And then in this case, the plate carrier slipping down to no longer protect the vital organs is, uh, is something to consider. That's why I, I, I don't really necessarily like plate carriers that are, you know, just plastic buckle holding here. The, uh, the shots here, we will check if there was any penetration to the rear. So let's go ahead and take a look here. So I think I misquoted. This is actually a plate from RTS Tactical, not from LA Police Gear but we've got some, interestingly enough, the rounds entered the front here and seem to have entered the spall coating and got trapped in, a, in an in interior layer. And actually some of them looked like they left with a little bit of force towards the bottom of the plate carrier, which is interesting. We can see we had four impacts here, five impacts actually one two three four five impacts and i don't think that any of them actually went through no 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 none of them went through so you can tell nothing definitely went through we had no we had no of none of the rounds penetrating ah six there's another impact here so we've got six one two three four five six impacts and there seems to be some sort of an interior layer trapping the rounds, which is cool because you're not getting a lot of ricochets. Pretty cool. So I am testing out the new RTS, uh, a new uh, Trigicon site, and kind of working through some details of sighting it in. Not exactly having the greatest shock groups, but having good enough results to show you guys the the results uh, that, that you guys want to see, having having good enough uh, results to show the, the use of the plate carrier and how the plate carrier is actually working out. We're going to continue on shooting and we're going to go on now to intermediate and then advanced pistol skill challenges. So stay tuned guys, 
questions and comments below. If you guys want to see more shooting tips, more testing gear like this, let me know. Thanks for watching. Bone out.